This is Harsh Rules, I'm Ben Harsh, and today we're going to learn to play Commands and Colors Medieval. Commands and Colors Medieval was released in 2019 by GMT Games and designed by Richard Borg. This game supports two players and takes about an hour per scenario to play. Before we begin this episode, I'd like to recognize the Harsh Rules Patreon supporters that help make content like this possible. If you'd like to support the channel, head over to patreon.com slash harsh rules to learn more. And once again, thank you for your support. When being attacked in close combat, the defender may announce the unit is going to evade instead of staying and fighting. Please note though, an attacking unit may not evade if the defender battles back. The following units are eligible to evade. Green circle light units and leaders if they are alone. Medium cavalry units may evade all foot and heavy mounted units and heavy cavalry and super heavy cataphract cavalry may evade all foot units. The following units may never evade auxilia infantry, warrior infantry, medium infantry, and heavy infantry. When a unit evades, it moves two hexes towards its own side of the battlefield. Essentially, this is a choice by the defender to withdraw their unit rather than stay and battle back. A quick note, however, an attacking unit may not evade if the defender battles back. A unit may not be able to evade, though, if the hexes behind it are blocked. Let's take a look. In Commands and Colors Medieval, a unit may not evade if it cannot move two hexes back towards its side of the board. Typically, this means the hexes are occupied by impassable terrain, units, regardless of its friend or foe, or a lone enemy leader. Terrain that is not impassable has no effect on evade moves. Therefore, an evading unit may move onto or through a forest or affordable river, etc. without stopping. Also, if the first hex a unit evades onto includes a lone friendly leader, the evading unit stops in that hex and the leader is attached to the unit. In this case, a one hex evade move will count as a legal evade. Also unique to Commands and Colors Medieval is the Parthian Shot. When a close combat attack is declared against a light bow cavalry unit, and that unit declares it is going to evade, it may also fire a Parthian Shot. After the attacking unit rolls its dice, and the light bow cavalry unit is not eliminated, it will then roll two battle dice representing it is shooting as it evades, in other words, the Parthian Shot. Only unit symbols of the attacking unit will hit when firing a Parthian shot, and all other unit symbols, leaders, swords, and flags rolled are ignored. After the Parthian shot, the light bow cavalry unit will evade two hexes towards its baseline. Prior to making an evade movement, the attacking unit determines and rolls the appropriate number of battle dice. However, only symbols that match the evading unit will score a hit. All other unit symbols, leader, sword, and flag die results are ignored. If the die results against the evading unit eliminates that unit, then a victory banner is gained. If the evading unit receives a hit and has an attached leader, a leader casualty check is made to see if the leader is hit using normal rules. We'll cover those rules a little bit later in this episode. Leaders provide units with a number of benefits. First, when attached or adjacent to a friendly unit in close combat, all leader die results equate to a hit. Second, when a unit is attached to a leader or adjacent to a lone leader plus one other adjacent friendly unit, this bolsters morale and allows that unit to ignore one flag. Third, a leader allows any attached foot unit to make a bonus close combat after a momentum advance. And finally, leaders enable the use of several command cards that provide benefits when moving units. There are a number of situations when a leader casualty check must be taken. When a leader is attached to a unit and the unit loses one or more blocks without being eliminated, there is a chance the leader may also be hit. 
make a leader casualty check by rolling two battle dice. To hit the leader, the player needs to roll two leader symbols. A quick note, only one leader casualty check is made during any combat sequence. When a leader is attached to a unit and the unit is eliminated, leaving the leader alone in the hex, the leader casualty check is made with only one die. To hit the leader, a player needs to roll one leader symbol. If the leader is not hit on this single die roll, the leader must evade one, two, or three hexes back towards its own side of the battlefield. Flags rolled against a unit that was eliminated have no effect on the leader. When the attached leader's unit is eliminated in close combat, the attacking unit may momentum advance into the vacated hex, and the leader evades out of that hex. When a leader is alone in a hex, in other words they're not attached to another unit, and it is attacked by range combat or close combat, the unit attacking the leader determines the normal number of battle dice to roll. To score a hit and eliminate the leader, the player will need to roll one leader symbol. If the leader is not eliminated, he must then evade. In this case, the attacking unit may not make a momentum advance after close combat against an unattached leader, whether that leader is eliminated or not. The leader evade process is somewhat different from that of units. A leader may evade one, two, or three hexes back towards its own side of the battlefield. When a leader evades, he must follow these rules. A leader's evade movement is one, two, or three hexes towards their side of the battlefield. The player who controls the leader determines the number of hexes he will move, and which path he will take as he evades. An evading leader may move through friendly units, but they may not end their evade movement in a hex that contains another friendly leader, impassable terrain, an enemy unit, or an enemy leader. An evading leader may move through an enemy unit, but this is governed by the rules for leader escape, which we will cover in just a moment. If a leader's evade movement ends in a hex with a friendly unit, they become attached to that unit. A player may also choose to evade their leader off the side of the battlefield. This saves the leader from becoming a victory banner for the opponent. If the leader cannot evade a minimum of one hex due to impassable terrain, the leader is eliminated and the opponent gains one victory banner. Next, let's talk about leader escape. If enemy units occupy one or two hexes of a leader's designated evade path, the evading leader must attempt to escape through those hexes. First, move the leader onto one of the enemy hexes. Allow the enemy unit in the hex to battle the leader. The attacking unit uses its normal number of close combat dice. The leader does not benefit from terrain. Next, to score a hit on a leader trying to escape, the attacker needs to roll one leader symbol. If the leader is not hit, his escape is successful, and he continues with his evade into the next hex. If this hex is also occupied by an enemy unit, the leader must again undergo the escape procedure. If his third hex of movement is also onto a hex with enemy units, he is eliminated, and the opponent gains a victory banner. Finally, if the leader ends his escape move onto a hex with a friendly unit, he becomes attached to it. And now that we've covered evasion and leaders, you should be ready to play more advanced scenarios in Commands and Colors Medieval. If you found this video helpful, please give me a like and share with your friends. To be the first notified when the next episode of Harsh Rules becomes available, please hit the bell icon for notifications. And as always, this is Ben Harsh for Harsh Rules. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.